In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is a new day. It is yet another edition of Catholic Meditation. Greetings, God's good people, and welcome. Today is Tuesday, the 18th of June, 2019. You are listening to Catholic Meditation with me, Father Blessed. We thank God for bringing us to this new day. Thank you too for joining us. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 8, verses 1 to 9. The Gospel is taken from St. Matthew, chapter 5, verses 43 to 48. I read from the first reading. Next, brothers, we will tell you of the grace of God which has been granted to the churches of Macedonia and how throughout continual ordeals of hardship, their unfailing joy and their intense poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. I can testify that it was of their own accord that they made their gift, which was not merely as far as their resources would allow, but well beyond their resources. And they had kept imploring us most insistently for the privilege of a share in the fellowship of service to God's holy people. It was not something that we expected of them, but it began by their offering themselves to the Lord and to us at the prompting of the will of God. In the end, we urged Titus, since he had already made a beginning, also to bring this work of generosity to completion among you. More, as you are rich in everything, faith, eloquence, understanding, concern for everything and love for us too, then make sure that you excel in this work of generosity too. I am not saying this is an order, but testing the genuineness of your love against the concern of others. You are well aware of the generosity which our Lord Jesus Christ had, that although he was rich, he became poor for your sake, so that you should become rich through his poverty. The Word of the Lord Thanks be to God. Be generous. Be generous. Today, beloved, we are invited to be generous. To be generous is to give, to be open-handed, to share, to share what we have with others. The secret of generosity is It is in giving that we receive. It is in losing that we gain. That is the logic. If a grain of wheat does not fall to the ground and dies, it remains but a single grain. But if it does die, 
it produces a great harvest. John chapter 12 verse 24. Till the grain loses itself, till it is generous of itself and with itself, till it gives itself away, then it produces grains much more than itself. But if it refuses to lose itself, that is to give away itself, it remains a single grain, no increase. That is the logic and the secret of generosity. It is in giving that we receive more. I give an example of students. The truth is, as a student who has understood particular concepts taught in class, that moment when you decide to go out of yourself to explain to others who have not understood, you understand even better. But if you decide to keep it to yourself, I tell you in truth, you will not understand as much as when you explain to others. It is in giving that we receive. St. Paul gives an example of the churches in Macedonia in today's reading. Despite their hardships and poverty, they overflowed in wealth of generosity and for this reason, they could survive. It is not about having much. They did not even have. Just being generous with their little. Generosity is a great gift and wealth that can improve ourselves and our society. If only we learned to be generous to ourselves and to others. St. Paul gives the example of Jesus, who though rich, became generous by becoming poor for us, giving himself away so that we may become rich through his poverty. Beloved, thin sowing means thin reaping. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. The truth and logic of generosity is the more we give out of ourselves, of our time, of our talent and resources to others, the more we think less of ourselves and more of the others, we rather grow richer and richer and we grow more. It is the same thing when Jesus talks about the parable of the talents. When you have a talent and lock it and bury it and keep it to yourself, you never improve. But the more you place it at the service of community and use it, what happens? You grow more talents from 5 to 10, from 3 to 6. I want to challenge you and I want someone to prove the Bible and to prove God wrong. That the more you give, it is the more you receive. And the measure with which you give out is the measure you will be given in return. Matthew chapter 7 verse 2. Let us play this game. Start giving and let me see if you will not receive. Challenge God and prove him and his word wrong. Not that the purpose of our giving is to wait for great returns, but it is just the rule of the game. It is God himself who says it. Do not be stingy. Do not hold back. Be open-handed. Share. Give. Generosity is all about reaching out. Even in games, when you are someone who does not like giving a pass of the ball to others but like keeping it to yourself, no one in turn gives a pass of the ball to you. But when you are generous and such a player who gives the ball out to others, they give the ball back to you and what happens, you can score even more goals. How should we give? Freely and cheerfully. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Not grudgingly, as though we are forced. If your heart does not tell you to give, if your heart is not in the gift, it is better not to give it. A gift given not out of love but duty destroys the very essence of generosity. We should be open and give to all. For if you give gifts only to your friends and those who can pay you back, what difference do you make? Luke chapter 6 verse 32 For even sinners do as much. In the gospel, we see a generous God who makes his rain fall and his sun to shine both on the good and the bad alike. 
Generosity is not only towards others, beloved. We can be generous even to ourselves. Some people are not generous to themselves. Are you generous to yourself? Do you give your body enough sleep and rest? Some people torment their bodies. No sleep, no rest. Do you keep your body warm? Do you feed well? Do you take good care of yourself? Do you make exercises? We should also be generous to ourselves. So we give freely, cheerfully, and the best we can. Later, in his parable of the widow and her might, Luke chapter 21, verses 1 to 4, Jesus will explain why her offering was the best and most appreciated, though the least of all. Giving is not necessarily how much we give, but how well we give. What destroys our spirit of generosity is this mentality and destructive song. I call it a destructive song. The song of I do not have. It is destructive because this saying kills our generosity. Many people would want to give, have, but refuse to give because they always say, I do not have. Generosity is not synonymous to having plenty. It may surprise you, but it is true, that those who even have much do not share. Generosity is an attitude that when cultivated, even in your limited resources, you will always have an open hand. A man who has not known to share in his little will never share even when he has plenty because he will still say he has not got. Let us cultivate that giving culture. And I tell you, when you give, you will never lack. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come on you and remain with you forever. Amen.